Thank you, friends. Thank you for joining us for this celebration of the Eucharist for the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today, January 30th, also begins Catholic Schools Week in our country. So during the celebration of the Eucharist, let us ask the Lord to bestow his blessing upon all Catholic schools in our diocese here in Homo Thibodeau, as well as in our country and in our world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. So that we might more worthily enter into these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins, stand up and tell them all that I command you. Be not crushed on their account as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sing of your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will, I will sing, sing of your salvation. salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will, I will sing, sing of, of your, your salvation. salvation. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. I, I will, will sing, sing of your salvation. salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will, I will sing, sing of your, your salvation. salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy 
and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge. If I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I might boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see instinctly, as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially. Then I shall know fully as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today, the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said to them, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. During my years as a priest and Far less so now as a bishop, but as a priest, it was my real joy to witness the vows of many, many couples 
who were entering into the sacrament of marriage. It was one of my greatest joys as a priest was to be present to couples during their time of preparation for marriage and then to celebrate the marriage liturgy with them. And without a doubt, I would say at least, if not more, at least 50% of the weddings that I did chose this passage from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians on love as the second reading to be proclaimed at their wedding mass or their wedding ceremony. Sometimes we hear this reading within the context of marriage. And for that reason, we associate St. Paul's words with a romantic connection or the sacrament of marriage, how love should be between a man and a wife. In actuality, however, St. Paul was not really referencing marriage when he wrote these words. They are very appropriate for the sacrament of marriage. But this letter, like all of Paul's letters, weren't general thoughts that he had on his mind that he wanted to share. Paul wrote those letters to communities for a specific purpose, for a specific reason, because of something that they were struggling with. And if we want to know the real meaning behind what St. Paul was saying in this reading, apart from its obvious application to the sacrament of marriage, it's very helpful to know who did St. Paul write this letter to? What was it all about? Paul wrote this letter to the Christians in Corinth. Corinth, at the time Paul wrote, was a very important city. Corinth, Corinth was the capital of a region, and it was incredibly wealthy. With all of that, it was also a city that was known for its immorality, delving into sensual pleasure. The church in Corinth was also known for an abundance, however, of spiritual gifts, prophecy, healing, tongues, miracles, you name it. The church in Corinth had it and knew it. But the church in Corinth was also ironically known for many challenges and struggles. In Corinth, immorality and adultery were rather commonplace. People there denied the resurrection of Jesus. People were very proud and puffed up because of their spiritual gifts. And the community was greatly impacted by a division between the wealthy and the poor. Even when the community gathered for the celebration of the Eucharist. So Corinth had many spiritual gifts, but Corinth had many challenges as well. God was doing a lot in Corinth, in the lives of the Corinthians, and the enemy wished to attack that. So while the Spirit of God was definitely moving among the Christians in Corinth, the church there was plagued by division, by rivalry, by factions, and by cliques. St. Paul is writing these words to the Corinthians to try to refocus them on what is actually important, on what it really means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Paul was saying, if you have all the greatest gifts, you Corinthians, if you speak in tongues, but you don't have love for one another, then you have nothing. You can have the gift of prophecy, having great knowledge of many things. If you have all the answers, can answer the questions, but you do not have love, you have nothing. If you give away everything you have to the poor, if you have unshakable faith, 
even if you endure great suffering, but don't have love, and you have nothing. The one thing necessary, the only thing that truly matters, the singular mark of the Christian disciple is love. And if you don't have that, then you have nothing. All of the great gifts that the Corinthian church was known for and boasted of mean nothing because the Corinthians had lost sight of the primacy of love. The most foundational thing Jesus asks of us, more than great deeds or incredible sacrifices or even a heroic faith, is to love. Love one another as I have loved you. The command of Jesus Christ. Now it's important though that we understand precisely what St. Paul means by love. Love can mean a lot of things. You can get as many different answers to the question, what is love, as there are people in the room. Paul actually, however, doesn't try to define what love is. Instead, in a wonderful way, Paul paints a picture for us of what love actually looks like. And the way that St. Paul describes love in the letter can almost be an examination of conscience for me and for you. So what then does love look like? It looks like being patient rather than getting angry with someone, especially when things don't go the way I want them to go or think they should go. It means not being jealous with regard to the gifts that others have. It means not insisting on my own way or my own ideas, but rather surrendering to someone else. Love means not being harsh with others or keeping score when we are hurt thereby allowing resentment to fester in our hearts. Love means never giving up, always being willing to get up and keep going, recognizing that the God who is love itself is always with us. Love leaves no room for division, which plagued the Corinthian community. The enemy knows that he cannot stop the gifts and grace of God. So instead, he often attempts to sow division, to squash any fruit of the Holy Spirit. True love cannot exist alongside division. Now, if you're anything like me, when I hear and reflect upon these words, I'm aware of just how far I have to go to love like Jesus. It's very easy, easy to apply this text of St. Paul about love to the love of a husband and wife. But remember, that's not what Paul was writing about. Paul was writing about how I am called to love anybody and everybody. That's more of a challenge. We can feel far away from the image of love that St. Paul paints. I know that there are people I am not patient with. There are areas where I can allow division to fester. Those are not pleasant realities. It can be problematic when we come face to face with that when we stand before what St. Paul paints for us of an image of love, particularly love for all people, and how close or how far away we are in our own lives to living that reality. I don't wonder, or I do wonder, 
But that's what happened to the community of Nazareth in our gospel reading today. They were being amazed at Jesus Christ. And then they turned out to be very angry at him by the end of the reading. What happened? What happened in this short span of the gospel? Jesus touched on their despising of others, those who were different from them. And Jesus points out to them that God acted profoundly in the lives of others outside of their group. Naaman, the Syrian, the widow of Zarephath. Those who heard Jesus' words consider those people outside of the grace of God. But Jesus lays before them the hard truth that God's love is extended to all. The community of Nazareth struggled to love. They loved one another, but they did not love those who were different from them. And Jesus places before them the reality of God's love for those whom they thought beyond God's love. And by the end of the reading, they're ready to throw him off of the cliff. The beginning, they're amazed, but when Jesus tells them the truth, then they're angry, and they don't love him either. St. Paul reminds us today, and Jesus Christ reminds us as well, that it's difficult to love as Jesus loves, to love one another as Jesus loves us, and yet that is the challenge. That is the harder way of love. Today, along with me, I invite you to recommit yourself, not so much trying to accept the challenge, to love those who it's usually easy to love, our family members and friends. For surely, this love of St. Paul speaks about our relationship with them. But the love St. Paul speaks of to the Corinthian community is more so about how we love those beyond our family members and friends, those who may not love us back. That's the real challenge. But this kind of love, as Jesus says and points out to the Nazareans, is the only way, the only thing, as St. Paul tells us, that will never fail us. May the love that God has for each and every one of us take deeper root in our minds and in our hearts, and may it bear fruit more abundantly in our love for one another. Amen. We stand together and profess the faith of our baptism. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the Lord and aware of his mercy, let us approach him and make known these areas of our need. For the church, may the Lord bless her efforts to send out missionary disciples ready to share God's goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For civic leaders, may the word of God penetrate their hearts and direct their feet along the path of righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all in need of forgiveness, reconciliation, or healing, may the Lord call them to repentance and bless them with healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, may the Holy Spirit help us to see and to truly know the great plans that the Lord has for us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, marked with the cross of faith, may they feast with the angels and the saints in the presence of God the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. During this Catholic Schools Week, let us pray God's blessing upon all Catholic schools in our diocese, in our country, and in our world. For those who devote themselves to the ministry of Catholic education, for administrators, faculty, and staff, for parents who entrust their children to Catholic education, that the gift of Catholic education might enrich our church and continue to enrich our communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our diocese who continue to suffer from the effects of Hurricane Ida, that they will receive what they need to rebuild their lives, their homes, their communities and businesses, and that they might know the strength and comfort of our God. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in you we place our hope and trust. Hear and answer us for these and all things we ask. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right, truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the The kingdom, kingdom, the the power, and the the glory glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Before we pray, let's make our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Now let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for your prayer and for joining us today for the celebration of the Eucharist. I express great gratitude to all of those who support Catholic education in our diocese, to principals, faculty, administrators, staff, parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, all of you who sacrifice for children to receive Catholic education. Thank you very, very much. Let us pray for Catholic education in our diocese during this Catholic Schools Week. I continue to thank you for your enduring faith and your generosity to our diocese. Thank you for your generosity. Catholic Charities, thank you for your generosity to our parish faith communities. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you this day and always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.